so welcome guys uh, to today's session and today's topic is to get familiar with database operations and in the database operations uh, we do have multiple databases like let's say for example we do have sql databases no sql databases and python is capable of talking to any database uh, whether it is mysql or postgresql or it is oracle or microsoft sql server right or whether it is mongodb or it is like you know, some other no sql databases python is capable of connecting to the databases now to connect to the databases we need specific libraries and some of the libraries uh, let's say for example if you are using like you know, database related libraries and some of the libraries are actually standardized using db api okay db api is like you know, a common interface okay like if you know the db api implementation of any uh, database let's say for example you are familiar with the db api implementation of mysql database it will be more or less similar in oracle more or less similar in other databases too but it's not the exact same okay so now the very basic operations what we do on database we do ddl operations we do dml operations ddl operations you can actually create any database objects or you can actually change it or update it based on a requirement let's say alterations and other stuff you are actually going to do on a table right so those things you can actually do it and then dml operations is like a manipulation operations you can insert the data update it right and then delete it and all these things you can do and then whenever the requirement is to drop the object you can definitely do it like not drop followed by the object so you can actually do that so before we get started the prerequisites are to practice all the things on your local machine or local laptop or your laptop personal laptop what you need to do is you need mysql workbench installed i have already installed mysql workbench and i'm just going to open the mysql workbench so here you can see mysql workbench i'm just going to create it like you know, open it now here mysql workbench is there and it, it should actually open the mysql workbench now as soon as you are actually in opening the mysql workbench you can see many uh, options over here using this mysql workbench you can actually connect to any of the remote databases let's see if you are working uh, in an organization and your database is actually hosted in azure or like hosted in uh, amazon aws right so you can actually connect to those databases okay and as well as you can connect to um like you know the the servers of the instances which are running on a local machine too so while installing the workbench just install it for the developer mode it will be pretty much lightweight and to deal with like on the databases and all so when we are running uh, at like now setting this up you'll be creating two users one is for the a regular user and then the second one will be like a root user root user if you log in as root user we can actually create any uh, like you know uh, users databases and all this stuff let's say for example here i'm just logging in as root user here you can see the databases i can go to the administrate administration and i can create whatever the required required like you know details are actually uh, whatever the required details or what is the required for our um, what is needed for our requirement we can actually deal with that for example if i want to create a user okay as root so what we can do is we can click on users and privileges right so if i'm clicking on users and privileges so here you can see uh, like you know the users i can see it's your training is there python is there and all these stuff are actually there now if i'm going to add a account I'm just clicking add as account i can specify the username let's say i'm just giving test user one and then authentication is actually standard authentication just leave it as standard authentication set the password over here let's say i'm just giving like no test user one and the password is i'm just keeping the same uh, it says like no it is a weak password same as username so i'm just giving test underscore user one 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 and similarly here i can give the password okay 
uh, and then whenever I'll just go go ahead you know uh, administrative roles I'm going to click and then here I can see what kind of role we are going to give whether it is a DBA whether it is a user administration role which is a database manager database backup admin so if you feel like creating a DBA user just give DBA so all the privileges will be there if I'm giving like you know user admin then the respective uh, respective a uh, role access will be selected like here you can see uh, if it is user admin it is just a create user and then I reload that's it if I'm going for I'm just going for like you know maintenance admin here you can see maintenance admin if I'm selecting it is selecting maintenance admin and process admin here you can see event privileges and reload and then all other privileges and here you can see like in you know, a shutdown super user answer super and then show databases reload and all you can actually do that so now if I'm going to if I'm not going to do anything I just want to actually cancel it I'll just close this out uh, maybe we can go here login and then uh, revert I'm just going to revert it so that's it and not doing anything just closing it out okay that's done or else what we can actually do is I can directly go to the uh, home page here like it is local local host like you now as a root it was I have logged in as root okay so now if you want to log in as the user I have already created a user like you know python training and in the python training user uh, I have like you know granted the privileges uh, to as DBA like you now because I wanted to create the databases programmatically and other stuff so that's the reason I've just given so now here if I go ahead in a schema I just created a, a schema employee okay under the employee if you expand it you can see there are two tables EMP and department so now if I'm executing select start from EMP right so now here you can see uh, like the employee databases in sorry the data records actually uh, from the employee table uh, it is going to retrieve the records from the employee table so let's look start from department if I'm giving right so if I'm giving department here you can execute the query here you can see like no department and if you are actually uh, like you know, getting familiar with workbench for the very first time just scroll it up you can see it here like you know what are the operations you are actually doing like what action you are actually executing and all right how many rows it has returned and all these things how much time it has taken all all this information will be here like you know this kind of a high level logging like you now what's happening over here okay and similarly you can do any operations here okay any operations on this particular database so now for now i'm just going to tell you uh, like you know what is the uh, connection string for example like you now we are going to use to connect to this database before we get familiar with the connection string and uh, like you know, what we use and all right so we need to understand like how we connect how do we connect to the database let us see here we do have we do have one model that is known as mysql connector if you are not having like no mysql connector in your uh, local machine uh, what you can do like go to the package manager and then expand the python packages here and if you are using pycharm and then give mysql connector okay so now here i can give like no mysql itself the connector so you can actually install uh, the mysql connector this one okay the virtual mysql connector you can do that and then connect to uh, it is deprecated and it's saying like you know deprecated go to the official version of uh, pypy right you know pypy mysql are uh, connected for python so it is mysql connected to the python 8.0.31 guys remember if you are using like you know, the older connectors it is it is going to flag like you know, it is deprecated if it is like you now available with the mysql connector just click on that you can see the information here 8.3.1 so it is saying like you no know, mysql driver written in python which does not depend on mysql c client libraries that means uh, we really don't need any client software to be installed on this machine to talk to the mysql database because it has implemented using the db api so if it is implemented in db api 
uh, any libraries implement any database libraries using like you know, the API interface, then you really don't need any client on this particular machine where this program is actually going to execute. So in my case, it is in my local host. So uh, DB API using DB API interface, we can actually able to connect. So that is one thing. So if it is not installed, just click on installation. You can upgrade it also. The package manager, you can actually use in the CLI mode or else you can actually do it in the graphical user interface mode if you're working on the PyCharm and the virtual environment will get refreshed accordingly. Then we have to familiarize like you now these five and uh, these five methods using which we can actually do any kind of database operation. The first one is connect. So in the connect we need to pass four parameters. Ideally three parameters. Database is optional, but we can actually definitely wait, you know explore like you know why I'm saying database is optional and how do we specify it? I'll just tell you. Now, when we are actually executing like in a connect, we need to specify the keyword arguments basically, like what is the user, what is the host, what is what is the password, what is the database, like all this information we need to pass it to the connect. Then cursor, uh, this is the uh, most important method of like in a, um, this database connectivity, basically magical connector we are actually going to use. So now here, cursor is needed to execute any sql statements it could be a ddl statement it could be a dml statement it could be anything related to the sql we can actually execute using cursor okay so now how do we do it the step one i can say step one is connect step two is create a cursor this is a step one step one we need to connect step two we need a cursor we need a Cursor to do any operation. Step three, execute the SQL. Step four, we need to fetch the result or records. Okay, and then step five, if it is in short or any operations like a select doesn't need any commit, but if it is anything else. Uh, like you now, let's say for example, you are like, updating and you need like, you know, force commit and all. So those things you can actually do it using commit. These are the very basic operations we are going to do today in the database programming part. Okay. So now let us get started. Like you know, the first one is like you now, how do we import MySQL dot connector? Now here we go. I'm just going to write a program uh, example on DB right database programming db operations new python file and here i'm just giving db operation mysql python file now import import mysql if you give like the mysql automatically it is coming mysql dot connector that's it so i just given like the mysql dot connector what is next next is as i told the step one is connect so now let's say I'm just saying my connection equals to here I can say mysql uh, dot connector okay dot connector and then dot connect connect to what it is saying like you know, connect to what connect to uh, I can say it here uh, host what is my host uh, at my workbench is in the local host I'm just going to give local host if it is running in your case running on on a different host altogether you can actually specify the different host altogether okay now then i'm just going to give like user what is my user here i'm just giving python underscore training training and just going to drop this user after the training so just keep the password as same so now here i'm just giving like no password password equals to but ideally we should not actually do the password hard coded in any of the programs what we need to do is we can actually create it and store it in a um, properties file right you know the DB properties file and using if you are loading it in a json file you can use json model to read it if you are keeping it in a csv file you can read it from a csv file if you are keeping it in on a binary file you can actually read it from the binary file but uh, my recommendation will be like you know encrypt and store the password then decrypt and they use it okay 
so many thing is fine so encryption and decryption hundreds of libraries are actually available you can actually do it so um if you are actually coming from a linux background you, you must have actually used one command like you know base 64 encoding right so for base 64 command to uh, encode and base 64 hyphen d to decode similarly we have lot of implementations in python using which you can encode and decode it okay then like you know, storing the password in plain text so now that that's all about that's all about like you now how we can actually give the password and then we can okay let me do one thing let me don't use uh, like another you know, database for now now the connection is done now if i'm giving like you know print uh, print the connection now in this case it is not going to print localhost python training and python training if it is successful it will be returning a mysql object okay now here you can see mysql connection connection text okay so this is a mysql connection object now the question is is it like you know going to return always the answer is no let's say if i'm giving my password is like you know, 12 which is a wrong password now if i'm running this program here you can see the connection that the error still error messages here you can see access denied so whenever access denied like you know, here you can see access denied python training at localhost using using password that means password is yes so that means there is something wrong with the password now i'm just giving this one the password is incorrect that's fine i'm just giving localhost one two three four now if i'm running this program let us see like now what is going to happen here the step one is connect and we are exploring connect method here so using connect we can able to connect now it is the system is still trying to make a connect connection to localhost one two three four it is saying unknown mysql server host localhost 1234 that means something wrong with your host if something wrong with your user id password then you are going to get access denied something wrong with your host you are going to get localhost 1234 in this case let's say your database server is actually under maintenance it is not available on the os path and then it is out of network basically ideally this will not be out of network but it is is down for example in this case you will not able to actually connect so that's all about like now how to print the connection we are not going to print the connection um like in a real time but whenever it is required you can definitely use like no print connection like this then the next step is we need a crusher using which we can actually talk to the database and perform various operations okay so now i'm just going to create let's say my crusher my sewer equals to or crusher you can actually give sewer as well you can give that like i'm just giving connection dot crusher that's it connection dot crusher like create a crusher now my requirement is, requirement is to execute uh, like you know show the databases like what are the databases actually available we saw employees there world is there cities are there i think couple of other databases are actually there right so now if my requirement is to execute show databases right now no, i'm just storing it here a sql command here like you no know, sql equals to i'm just giving uh, show databases show databases okay so now here we go and here i'm just giving my pressure dot execute then execute of what execute the sql statement what i have so i have a sql command or sql statement i can say like you know sql execute that sql you can ask me can we give the direct statement here absolutely we can give and uh, it is not required but whenever your sql is like you know, pretty big either you have to keep it in variable so that it is easy okay so now my crusher dot execute my sql so that's it and then now i want like you know the data the result first step connect second step read the crusher third step execute the statement fourth step retrieve the values so we are going to retrieve the values from where we are actually going to retrieve the values from the my crusher i can actually using the crusher only we can execute we can retrieve the loop the crusher is the key so my crusher dot i can say here like you know fetch all like fetch everything so it is it is there in the data now i'm just going to give like print data let us see like now what's going to happen here okay so now if i'm running this program here you can see it is saying employee information schema mysql performance schema sakila sys and world 
let us verify whether these databases are actually there or not. So now here you can see the databases like employee, circular, C, world, and some of the databases it is showing like you know, which is not available, it is not viewable here, right? If I go to here, like in you know, a local group instance, here I go to like the you know, schemas, I can also see this, right? See and all these things. But some of the some of the schemas which are actual system specific schema, MySQL is also returning that information schema, performance schema, and all these things are actually getting returned. Okay. So that is the default behavior, and this is how we can actually get the output. Now the question is okay, I got the databases. Now I want to actually iterate these values. Like how do I do it? So now let's say your requirement is okay, that is how printing it, that is good. But I want to print something different, like now as per my requirement, how do I do it? Now here you can see uh, I'm just giving like you know, 50 times and just for uh, like you know separation here. Now for I can see DB in uh, enumerate enumerate of like you know what enumerate of uh, I can say here enumeration of uh, data right data like how many databases are there let's say I'm just giving like number and db in n and db in uh, in this data I'm just giving like a print here the number and then db now if I'm running this program now let us look at here it is like you now giving us little different right so here you can see it is giving the first database zero it's starting with index zero if you are able to recollect enumerate also we can start it with one we can give it here so it will start with like you no know, one followed by how many databases are actually there so it is saying like you no know, seven databases are actually there like employee information schema mysql and all this stuff so now you can ask me why we are actually getting this moon bracket here Okay, this is something with the core concepts. What is this value? It's a list. List of what? We are having all the items. What are these item types here? The item types are actually tuple. Then you can ask me, okay, item types are actually tuple. Then why we are actually having a comma here? Tuple with one element. A tuple with like non, null tuple basically. You have to actually end up with a comma, right? It is saying like no, this is actually single element tuple okay so now we are having employee information schema and all so if your requirement is okay i do want these brackets like moon brackets i want like no print employee that's well and good we can actually give zero now here if i'm running this program here you can see like these are my schemas database schemas one is employee information schema mysql performance and then sakilas sys and then our now, if you if you need like you know, okay, that's fine. You want in uppercase to it, like you upper upper function is there, lower function is there. You can actually ask for your choice. You can actually deal with that. So this is how you can actually show the databases. Now let us proceed further. I'm just going to use this same program. Uh, like now the statement, I'm just going to change a little bit. That's it. Now I'm just giving like you no know, DB operation, MySQL. And then program is one Python file. Here we go, and this is all same. The concept remains same. Now here I'm just going to say like you know, instead of show databases, I want to do one thing in the in the in the in the previous command output. You see like the employee database is there, and here I'm just going to execute uh, like you know the the MP, like you know, select start from select start from that from employee dot emp that's it like employee database emp is the table <coughs> we can actually do this way now if i'm running this program and i want to uh, i do want to print this uh, i can actually directly print this one and then see like now what's what's coming coming here and accordingly we can actually change it okay so now i have not changed anything all other things they mention till like my cursor dot execute sql i just change the sql statement i'm just doing a select start from the employee table that's it now if i'm giving like my select start from employee table what is the output let us see here now here you can see all the data it is coming like you know it is saying 7669 smith clerk 
then it is using a decimal decimal method that is the default one like now mysql returns the value from the database then we do have date and time date and time value and all other stuffs are actually available here right so uh, shelf man and basically all the information if you look at here it is again it is again the tuple right here you can see this is a tuple right and uh, this particular tuple is having uh, like you know, multiple values basically now it is how many records are actually there let me see like you know, how many records are actually there i can say like length of data length of data if i give like length of data <clears throat> it is going to give us like you know, how many records it's saying like you know, 14 rows are actually there okay number of rows i can say number of rows number of rows is length of this okay now running the program now it has all the rows now i want the first row to get the first row it is returning as a list i can i can row number one here i'm just giving row one is data of data of zero right so if i'm giving data of zero here you can see this is the row number one and again how many fields are actually available here right now the length of row number one and uh, let's say row one elements i can say uh, here we go row one elements how many elements length of data of zero length of data of zero now if i if i do this now here you can see it's saying like you know eight elements are there okay so eight elements are there now if your requirement is you want the first field you want the second field you want the third field you want the fourth field okay so now how do you, how do we do it like you now let's say it is employee id and then and, uh, name then designation let's say first three fields so now what i need to do here is i can specify print uh, let's say data zero of data zero of this row zero and I can say here like now zero data zero of zero then uh, here we can say EID employee ID and then employee name e name I can give it here e name name data zero of one and then i can say like no designation here i can specify psg psg data zero of two if i'm running this program here you can see like it is giving us the data in the valid format like as per the requirements we are able to programmatically fetch the data for smith and the employee id is for smith the name is smith the designation is clerk so we got it got this information but if your requirement is that's all fine but i don't want to actually do it i don't want to actually do it like in this format now how do we do it like you now in a better formatting okay now let me like all the data you want and you want like in a row one row two and row three so how do you do it right so how do we print it let us let us write one more program now python new python file db operation mysql 3 python file here we go and i'm not going to print number of rows and number of elements and all this is actually already done now we know what kind of data we are getting from here right so in the data so now here what i'm going to do here is uh, I'm just going to do here is for e record in data, e record in data, and then I'm just going to print, uh, I'm just going to print one print statement should be enough. I want the employee ID, that is e record of one, e record of zero. I can say here e record of zero, and then e record of one. <clears throat> e record of one and then we can say e record of two record of two and 
that's it and if we are doing this now let us see what is the result here now tuple object not callable and then okay tuple object is not callable okay i see so now what is there let me print it like you know without this i think we are actually missing something here and i'm just giving like you know print e record okay now let us see top 10 now here it is printing all the records so it should be e record of zero this one e record, e record of two and why it is not coming uh, let me see it here e record of one e record of two and let us see of ten general decimal values and okay so now length of the record why it is not working it should actually ideally work am i missing something here looks like so we'll see that uh-huh okay i got it so what is the problem so now data the size is actually 14 and then e record it should actually print all the employee records let me let us see like now what is happening here employee records and if i'm running this program it is it should actually print like all the records right so all the 14 records are actually here so now from all the 14 records uh, what is missing here is uh, like you know here you can see uh, this is actually let's say if i'm giving like no length of length of e record length of e record now here you can see it should actually print 8888 8, 8, 8 and 8 so that is all done so it is having eight records but why it is not able to print the e record we may need to narrow it down okay e record of ah oh, okay i see i was doing a mistake because i was using a moon bracket like this so which is wrong that was my bad and that is the reason like now why it was saying like it was not callable i did not realize it okay i was using like now as confident okay i'm doing good doing like no correct it is an index guys the subscript right the subscript we need to actually put it in bracket like this so e record of zero then it was act of copy paste actually i did the one error and then copy pasted it multiple times here right now e record of one and e record of two if I'm running this, here you can see it is actually printing the data like this. And we do have like you know the R justification uh, justifications basically, right? So if I'm giving like you know, right justification, left justification, and all, uh, I will show you something like this. Let's say, for example, I I have the data like in this format. Let's say message message equals to let us revisit hello world okay now message dot are just a right justification of 20 or i can give 50. okay now run the program control shift of 10. if i'm giving it here like you know here you can see uh where is the print we need to print it right so without print oh, it is not going to work so if i'm running this program here you can see it is actually doing a right justification if you want like you no know, left justified you can actually give left justification so it will be giving like you know spaces after l just so l just you will not actually realize it here let us implement this l just and uh, we don't need to implement the R just, we just need to imp like uh, implement the L justification. So now, if I'm going to do a L justification here, I can definitely give like, no, this is my, I'm not going to disturb this one. I'm just going to print it differently here. Control C, and then here we go. And this is my print statement. And I'm just going to give dot L just just of let's say employee id is 10 uh, like uh, 10 characters or 10 num 10 digits then i'm just giving employee name is 20 characters 
and then we do have the third one third one is uh, the designation again the designation i am also giving like you know 20 characters okay if i'm giving this let us see like you now the same data but it will be printed very nicely uh, okay has no attribute or decimal value is not having okay i see so now what we need to do we need to actually do a str type so many things like as we implement like you now uh, casting also we are actually familiar so as we go like you now we are going to understand and like lot of things and then understand like you now how to do it better now here you can see it is actually printing all the records so now if you want to actually print anything on the header like an employee id employee name and the designation feel free to do that that is like not a big deal at all so you can actually do that like now i'm just giving like 10 just to like a print it closely like this if you are actually doing any console deployment like this you can do it let's say think about um like in the previous session we are familiar with the rest api calls right so when you ever you are actually getting a rest api call you are getting a json formatted value now the next step is we got the json formatted value that we need to insert it to the database we'll call a rest api call get the details and then insert the data to the database now how do we do it right so to do that you need to create a table and then manage it right so that is how we can actually proceed with the database uh, like complete database operation basically one is develop a rest api using fast api or like you know a flask or anything and expose it people can consume it like you can pull the data from the database using this piece of code is going to help you to make a database connectivity then as you are when you are going to be familiar with like no fast api implementation fast api is very quick to get started but there are like lot of things like to learn so you can actually connect to the database expose the data using the restful apis other interfacing applications can consume it and let's say there are already rest APIs implemented and you need to consume it and store it in your application database you can use the request model use the request.get or request.post or anything like put or any other operations right and rest operations basically and once you do that you will be getting the data maybe in the text maybe in the json format right and then to parse it uh, as soon as you parse it you want to insert the data to the database you can definitely insert the data to the databases as well now think about think about i'm getting the data in this format but my requirement is all the result should be in the um, like the json formatted value like not in this format because i'll be doing a database operation we'll get the data and the data should be in the json format so that we can return the same data to the restful api call which basically whoever is consuming as consuming our like the restful are going to consume a restful api they can get the data in the json format so how do we do it here let me give you one more example here new python file now i'm just going to give you a db example let's say uh, db mysql right mysql example 4 now here we go python file we can actually put it like this and let me modify it little bit here okay now look at here we really don't need this but take it out now control shift of 10 if i'm running this it should actually run if i give like no print of data print of data now if i'm running this program it returns a list guys look at here it returns a list list of tuples now my requirement is i want dictionary i don't want actually this then what we can actually do here is we can definitely do uh, we can say like okay we are actually looking dictionary equals to true the results should be instead of list it should return as a dictionary now guys look at here here it is printing decimals mean then all the decimal values right in the date and time and all these things are actually coming this is by default how it is going to come if you are giving like no dictionary equals to true let us see like now how how is the uh, like now how the data is coming 
it is coming as like here you can see emp no e name the key value pair basically it is coming in the key value pair irrespective of where is the data but this is what we are going to use it in the real time because some table think about like in a customer record and we are having like 20 columns out of 20 some of the columns will be blank right so in that case if it is a key value pair then it will be very very easy if it is not a key value pair then it will be difficult for you okay so now now the question is if i am having like you know, this data let's say for example i want the employee name and the designation for example now i'm just giving like select employee name from a designation uh, designation i need to actually check what is the designation value over there and um, i need to actually go to my sql workbench and then see uh, what is the value select star from emp local instance python training here right select star from emp select star from emp right and i'm just running this program here it is saying job so that means it is ename and job why i'm just looking for ename and job field so now how i can actually do it here ename from a job from employee huh. before we proceed further here i'm just giving employee.emp employee.emp now if you want to like you know do it like you know differently you don't actually give employee here there is a argument here you need to pass that is what we can say we can say like now database or database equals to emp or employee it is employee not emp our database is equal to employee if you are using database there no need to give anything you can actually directly get select star from emp that's it now this semicolon is also it is optional <clears throat> if you are giving like this here you can see ename and clerk right and then ename and salesman and all this stuff we are actually getting it here now that's all about like how we are actually getting the data if uh, if my requirement is uh, something different like you know i want to print the entire result in the json format entire result in the json format how do we do it right so now uh, here it is like you know an interesting one i'm just going to tell you like how to do this uh, let me do this differently uh, one moment now here we go and i'm just going to give python file and database or i can say db mysql example file python file and then the same database here and i'm just going to tell you like you know how do we how do we get the uh, json formatted value basically okay and before we understand like you know how to get the json formatted value few other things also we need to actually understand like you know um, okay let us do one thing let us let us return the value in the well uh, json formatted value okay um, like well form json formatted value how do we do it okay so let me do this differently uh, i'm just taking it out let me do it like now like this i'm just going to check here it is meet and all okay it is not required then we need to give dictionary equals to true okay fine and employee where name equal to smith name equal to smith okay name equal to smith and i can actually quote it you can quote it or i can quote it in double quotes if there's a quoting issue okay so now if i'm running this program here we are going to get the data unknown column name it is e name e name dr smith okay here we go so it is giving like you now this is the employee record which is having e name and clerk here okay so now the question is okay i got like you know e name uh, e name and then clerk here right so now i want this in the well formatted json now if i printing like you know zero here if i'm printing zero here here you can see the data is actually e name smith job and clerk but 
this is not a well formed json now how do we return it in a well formed json right so that is what we are actually going to learn right now so now before we do this uh, let's say hope you remember like in the previous session we were actually doing json.dump json.load json.dump json.load and all right using json library so import json and just doing here and print and just giving here json. json. dump or json. dumps json. dumps of what data i can say like indent just give indent as actually four indent as four if i'm running this program here you can see it is actually giving us the data in a well formed json now directly we can actually return it now the question is what if i am having all the elements all the elements like you know here we do have like a you know, lot of elements here right so um uh, i mean lot of employee records now if i if my requirement is to return everything like in the json format then how do i do it all right all the employee records how do i uh, return in the json format now i'm just giving python 5 now here i'm just giving uh, db my sql example 6 python 5 so here we go and then i'm just going to remove this condition because i want like you now all the employees here and then all the employee records i want to print as json to them right now do we how do we uh, like return it now if i'm giving you like you know print of data let us look at here okay print of data if i'm giving here you can see it is a list of dictionaries list of dictionaries but what is my requirement i want a complete dictionary right so how do we do it so in that case guys what we need to do is we need to do it differently like how do we do it now let us look at here let's say i'm just giving dictionary data we can do it on the fly but i'm just like for easy understanding i'm doing like this way dictionary data i'm just giving here all employee all employee like now uh, all employees i'm just giving this is actually a key what is my value my value is data that's it my value is data now if i'm giving print dictionary data now if i'm running this program here you can see it has like all the data all employees then followed by like you know all the values now the question is that's fine but my requirement is i want in a pretty print format okay it should actually print nicely in the console like now how do we do it it is very very easy guys so it is again the same json.dumps json.dumps of dictionary data and what is our indent whether it is two four zero and all these things you can actually do it let's say if your requirement is zero you can actually run the program and see it is not it is going to be printed but indent will be like no nothing will be here now if you want like no indents would be two or four or six or anything i did it like no use four in python but you can actually feel free to use as per your requirement so now here you see like this is a well printed json like uh, if you if you are able to recall like we were actually uh, creating a sample json file of servers application like in the previous session right here this json content is actually completely generated from uh, generated from the um, uh, from the program itself right and this data from where we got this data we got this data from the database that's all about like now what we have actually done okay so now if you your requirement is let us try something interesting here if you want all employee details from the database and we are going to experience an error through if with this approach i'm just going to tell you that because we need to do it db mysql then example seven if you are familiar with the seven eight examples you can deal with mysql any operation you can actually do only thing is you need to like you know, just change the um, change change the query as per the requirement if i'm giving like you know star definitely we are going to get error because in json it will not able to understand the decimal format 
okay now type error object of type decimal is not json serializable we cannot convert the json object to a serializable format like no decimal so to do that i'm just going to define a custom json function to deal with this hope you remember right now how to define a function let's say uh, i'm just giving custom json json custom json which will take like you now one item let's say for example i'm just giving like you now item uh, item like this okay and then what it is going to return it is going to return a dictionary which is uh, like you know here we can give f type type of item item am i missing anything okay, i think i'm just yeah. okay so now here we see like you know what is going to happen now here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use default and this is like now even even for me also it takes time to recollect all these things okay so we need to actually spend some time understand the core concepts once in a blue moon we are going to use some of some of the concepts or some of the tricks so just play around with it and until you find out a solution so that's it so it is a very uh, simple solution very nice and we have all the data like all employees so from a table we have converted it to a json that's it like all employee table let's select start from emp this is the result okay this is the result of the json now if your requirement is okay that's fine i want to actually write it to a write it to a json file like how do i do it now i can say like you know it is dictionary data is there right and then we are actually using dumping the dictionary data here right similarly using json to dump you can actually dump it to a, a particular file dump uh, i hope you are able to recollect like you know, how do we do it let's say for example with uh, open i'm just giving like you know employee.json emp.json file right and then here i'm just giving emp.json that's fine and then i'm just giving write mode as uh, let's say edition ej and then json dot dump json dot dump of what dump of what like dump we are going to we are going to dump which which data we are going to dump we are going to dump the dictionary data and definitely we need the indent dictionary data uh, to where to ej dictionary data to ej and if you want like an indent we can actually use the indent equals to four that's it so now emp.json file is there so now if i'm running this program here you can see something went wrong the type okay the type is not working so we need to dump i think it should support this one too default equals to custom.json now if i'm running this program now all output is working fine if i go here emp.json emp.json it should be somewhere here emp. dot json here we go so pretty nice so we got all the records like you know this is my employee record one employee record two employee record three similarly we do have 14 records everything is written to a file I write it to a json save it process it interchange between applications and all everything is on the fly you can actually do it so it's very very easy if you understand the concept it's very very difficult if you do not practice and understand the concept so thank you guys we are done with all the database operations